On September 26, 2022, NASA smashed a spacecraft into an asteroid called Dimorphos, all in the name of testing a way to defend planet Earth from potentially hazardous asteroid strikes in the future. The goal is to reduce the speed of Dimorphos enough that its orbit around a larger asteroid, Didymus, becomes shorter. This would demonstrate to us that we could deflect an asteroid enough to save the planet if we ever had to. While it's still too early to know exactly how successful the mission was, the early signs are looking great. It takes Dimorphos just under 12 hours to orbit Didymus, and any change in the speed of the asteroid and its orbital length will be very small, and they'll need to add up over time. This means that it could take weeks or even months before we know exactly how much we changed the orbit. In the meantime, check out this cool high resolution version of the final shot sent back from the spacecraft. It looks kind of far away from the asteroid to be a final image, but DART was traveling at a very fast 6.6 kilometers per second. So really this shot, which is 12 kilometers above the surface is just two seconds before impact. We did also see this image, which is just a strip at the top. This came about because the impact happened and the craft was destroyed while it was partway through sending this image, leaving us with just a tease. We also have this best guess for the impact site here, marked by the X, and an approximate size comparison with a human, so you can see how big these asteroid rocks really are. Before we go any further, I want to take a moment just to enjoy the pure happiness that came about from the successful impact of DART into the asteroid. Just look at this footage that Heidi Hamill shared on Twitter. It's like being at a rock show, but it's actually a load of scientists watching a spacecraft crash. I have a full video on the channel all about the mission, how it works and why we did it. But in this video, I really wanna show off some of the footage we've seen since the impact. This includes images from Hubble and JWST, and I'll show those off later in the video. But I wanna start with the ground-based telescopes and what they were able to see, because really it's very impressive. Let's start with the smallest telescope that had footage that I could find online. This was taken by a telescope in Israel with only an 11 inch mirror. Here and in all of the footage we'll see from the ground-based telescopes. The bright object that we're focusing on is the whole system of the two asteroids. Because from here, Dimorphos is too small to be resolved next to the much brighter Didymus. The brightening happens after the impact when loads of ejecta is blown off from the asteroid, resulting in a lot more light being reflected away from the system and towards us. The more ejecta, the brighter it looks. Now, if this is what we can see with a small ground-based telescope, just wait till we get to the bigger space-based ones. The amount of ejecta and the speed that DART was traveling are all really good signs that we've probably slowed down the orbit, but we just don't know for sure yet. Next up is footage from the asteroid early warning telescope Atlas in Hawaii. And again, we see loads of brightening and cool ejecta being thrown into space. Similar footage is available from these meter wide telescopes in South Africa, and we can actually see that over time, the tail seen around the asteroid is growing. Now, I think it's time to take this a lot closer. Head into space and see what the CubeSat Lycia cube saw. This is the little companion CubeSat that DART released a couple of weeks ahead of impact. The images still aren't the clearest that you could imagine, because although this camera is in space, Space is really big and it's a relatively small camera. As ever, the bigger object in these images is Didymus and the smaller one being smacked up is Dimorphos. These images show the aftermath of the impact from the closest camera to the destruction and we see loads of dust and ejecta. We see these awesome looking streamers and a surprising amount of cool looking structures. I think this is all super cool, but I also think it's time we head to the great observatories. This is actually the first time that JWST and Hubble have simultaneously observed the same object. Let's start with Hubble and we'll come back to Webb in a moment. Hubble observed the asteroid ahead of the impact and then again a few times after the crash taking 45 images in total. As far as I can tell though, they've only released three of these images, taken at 22 minutes, five hours, and 8.2 hours after impact. 
we can see the ejector and dust as rays stretch out from the body of the asteroid. The bolder, wider spread ejector on the asteroid's left is where Dart landed. Curiously, some of the rays look a bit curved, and we actually need to take more data to actually understand why this is. It could be from the solar wind or the motion of the asteroid through the solar system, but it could also be something else entirely. From these images, it looks like the asteroid increased in brightness by about three times after the impact, and that increase remained for many hours after the impact. This might mean that the loose composition of the asteroid allowed matter to keep being lost for a long time after the crash. But again, further data is needed to understand this better. Hubble will now observe Dimorphos 10 more times over the three weeks post-impact, and this will let us study the clouds around the asteroid and its brightness, giving us a full picture, from impact to the disappearance of the clouds of debris. Now, from the visible light of the Hubble images, let's go to the infrared light of JWST. Just as Hubble did, Webb took an observation before impact, and then several observations over the next few hours. These were all taken using the NERCAM instrument, although follow-up observations using MIRI and NERSPEC are planned, and spectroscopic data from here will teach us about the chemical composition of the asteroid. In the released images we have here, we again see the core of the asteroid system and loads of dust ejected in what looks like a wind away from the main body of Dimorphos. This was actually a really difficult observation for Webb to do because the asteroid is moving about three or four times faster than the tracking limit that Webb was designed for. <laughs> to demonstrate this, here's one observation of the impact that went wrong. The trail here isn't a real thing. It's an artifact from a gone wrong tracking. JWST lost guide star lock here, and the asteroid rapidly trailed out of the field to the lower left. Most of the other observations did work fine, with just one other losing guide lock. Let's end with one final image that isn't of Dimorphos, but instead, it's of you. Lycia Cube turned around and snapped this picture of the Earth and the Moon, which I think is pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment below to let me know what you think of all of this. Subscribe if you're new and have a great rest of your day. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.